there? Yes. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming out in the dark. Nice to see everyone. <laughs> uh, call to order, public appearances. Do we have anything, Wendy? Nope. Nothing came through. Approval of the September 2023 draft minutes. May I have a motion to approve, and then we'll discuss? I'll make that motion. Thank you, John. Any questions, clarifications, comments? Okay, nice job, Tim. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> then all in favor of passing the September 2023 minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And I abstain because I wasn't there. Good. Thank yes. you. Thank you for saying that. Financial report number four, July 2023 financial register. Um, when do, do we you want to take all three of these together, do you think, as a motion? Um, Sure. All right. So I will motion to approve the July, August uh, financial records and overviews. Mm, now discussion. Right. Sure. So starting in July, um, we had a couple of facility um, fees. You'll see overhead door. So we had some problems with the garage door. Um, Perts born. Came in at 677. That was the big pipe that we had to drain the whole building for. So I think pretty reasonable for the amount of work that they did. Um, I don't think there was. Oh, we have uh, task chairs um, in account 355. So that is what I'm doing is buying like four to six task chairs every year so that we don't get hit with having to buy like 60 of them any, in any given year. So that's what that is. Um, and you'll see WT Cox. Uh, magazine subscriptions, so we buy all of our magazine subscriptions through one jobber so that we don't have to fill out the little cards and do them individually. So that's why that one is quite large. It is shrinking year to year, though, because so many magazines are ceasing publication. So um, we'll see what we'll do with that in the long, long run. Um, you can get great magazines on Overdrive, though, if you haven't done it yet. And they're always available. You don't have to wait for them. They're fantastic. Okay, then in August on the register, um, we had an elevator repair. Um, you'll also see some travel reimbursements there. So that was the ALA conference that Kristen and Rebecca went to in Chicago. Also some stuff for the staff cookout. So we have two staff events a year, um, generally a, a cookout slash picnic in the summer at a park and then a holiday um, party here at the library. Wendy, I had a question about yeah. on 340, the library t-shirts. Yes. By Custom Inc. Do we do that every year? Not every year. Um, sort of when we run out. So we try to order a little bit extra so that when new staff start, they can have a t-shirt. Okay. Um, so when we run down to we only have extra larges and smalls, um, we tend to do. So we're, we've run through all of the colors that we know to do. I don't know what we're going to do next time. <laughs> we've done blue. We've done green. We've done gray. We've done black. And yeah. staff is never required to wear those, right? No. This is just no. Okay. Um, I think staff really appreciate them for summer reading. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're having like a performer day, it's really nice to sort of be labeled, right? So that people know to ask you for help. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you'll also see that we registered the little free library. Um, I'll give an update on that a little bit later. So mm -hmm. we paid for it, and then we got a discount on it. So there's two different charges here. Um, and then computers, um, so account 355, so computer replacements. We had 14,000 budgeted. We spent 9,000 on some of the laptops, so we, we do that over a five-year um, sort of schedule. And this year we added in, um, which will come at a later date, uh, new monitors. So we have had the same square monitors on all the patron computers since we opened, um, so we upgraded to landscape. It's, they're very nice. But they lasted for a good long time. And now we're going to sell them on surplus. So um, on the overview, I don't know that there's anything really remarkable. Um, there is a resolution that we're going to talk about in a little bit here um, about the utility account because we are, I don't think you quite see it here, but in my spreadsheet we are getting real close to it being overspent. I think that's because the chiller's not working properly. So. Um, I would just point out that the interest income account down in the blue section, we are at $68,951. We budgeted $2,000. Thank goodness, because that's where the money is coming from for the resolution. So we'll talk about that in new business. Any questions? Right. 
curiosity, what what is the saw? S A W. Oh, I think that was a drywall saw. Oh, yes. For the um, we had to ex expand the opening for the uh, new book drop, the new sorter, and on the inside we had to cut away the drywall to make sure that we had blocking in the right places. You kind of see what was back there. So I think that's what that was. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You can Good also question. use that for unruly. <laughs> 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 Okay, if there's nothing else that Wendy can clarify, all in favor of passing the July and August registers and overview, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No abstentions. Okay. Unfinished business. None. Nothing. New business, policy reviews, administration, gifts to the library policy. Yes. You want to talk about it first? Uh, let's do a motion first. Okay. I need a motion to pass the Fitchburg Public Library gift policy, please. I'll make that motion. Thank you. All right. So this is a policy that we have in place so that we are able to accept the generosity of people that want to donate things to us, but we do it kind of on our own terms. So we um, put some rules in place about strings attached that we, we can do what we want with, with the gifts that are given um, and that we you as a board would have to approve if we're going to agree to name anything, do anything, kind of like expend funds to take funds, that kind of thing. Um, one thing, the example I always give is the glass people that are at the top of the stairs were a gift, but then we had to invest quite a bit to get them put into the gates that they're in, so that kind of thing. If, if we're going to accept something but we have to expend money to utilize it, then, then that would come to the board. Um, we also talk about collections that are donated that we are we may put that in the collection, but we also may not put that in the collection and that we're not returning it um, if we don't. And that's a, that's a big one for us because we get a lot of donations of materials. Any questions about this? I didn't have any changes from last year. This has been a pretty solid um, policy for us. Wendy, do we usually just get books? Is that pretty common? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, I mean, we get monetary gifts as well. Um, okay. So we have a we have a pamphlet that we hand out to people that of how to give to the library, and it includes just directly to the operating fund, to the friends, or to the endowment. Okay. So this is really just for things that are going into the um, operating fund. Is there anything on here that anyone needs to have clarified? Okay. And all in favor of passing the Fitchburg Public Library gift policy, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Excellent. Now, Kristen is here. She's our youth services li uh, manager now. Sorry. <laughs> she was the librarian. Um, and she's going to do a presentation, but I think we'll go ahead and do the policy, the boring part first. Is that all right? Yeah. Everyone? All right. So this is my first policy with all of you, and luckily it's super easy. It is um, basically designated by the state statutes, and there's a record retention policy for um, Wisconsin Public Libraries, and it has not changed. So I'm assuming there are no questions there. Okay, then all in favor of passing the Ooh, record. We need a motion. Right. Yep. Oh, yep. Sorry. Need a motion. Yeah. Patrick, did I I'll, I'll move. Thank, yes. you. Okay. Thank you. All in favor of Passing the record retention policy, as suggested by Patrick, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Excellent. And now we'll have Kristen share her screen. I'm going to talk about the Youth Services Department. Okay. So, I am the Youth Services Manager. My name is Kristen Garvey. Um, I took over in May of this year, so from someone else you might recognize here, so this is... <laughs> um, so this is just an example of one of our bulletin boards that we do. And let's see here. So let me move this bar for myself here. Okay. So this is our youth services staff. We have two full-time librarians. Um, Margaret Howard um, is our youth services librarian, and she took over June af um, from me. And then we have Minda Maurer, she's our outreach librarian, and she's in the van up there. So, <laughs> Then we have four part-time library assistant twos. Um, they each work 20 hours a week, um, depending on when their schedule is. They kind of, um, some will do more preschool programs if they're here more in the morning, or more um, school age if they're in the afternoon. So we have Jesse Newman, Charmaine Sprengelmeyer-Podine, 
Christine Vernig and Lynn Barron. Have we ever thought about having people wear a name tag with their first name, even just so that you, when you so walk in? So we have in, badges um, that has a photo on it, and this is this will swipe through all the doors. Right. So everybody wears mm -hmm. this. We have had conversations recently because these have first and last names, and that makes some people uncomfortable. Right. Um, so we're either thinking about changing this one, but but. And, and, and a lot of people were in all I was here the other day that it would have been nice when yeah. you left to say goodbye, Mary, right. whatever her name right. was. Yeah. Um, and I so think it's a discussion worth having. I think that uh, sadly a lot of patrons take that as a over familiarity thing in some cases. Um, so I, I don't know how comfortable staff would be with it. Um, most people can handle that, but there's a fair number of people that use the library that. Might not. Fake names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so I'll just go on. There's a few of our department responsibilities. Um, we serve youth and teens, so we do programs um, for from zero to 18. Um, they're kind of usually broken up, zero to two. Our toddlers, one to three. Preschool, two to five. Um, school age kids, sometimes there's five to eight or five to 12. Um, we do kind of a tween age, 9 to 12, and then our teens. So we do in-person, passive, take-home, and online programs. You're probably pretty uh, familiar with our in-person programs like uh, preschool story time or STEM um, science programs, things like that. Passive programs, we just restarted the um, scavenger hunt in the youth services area, which is a lot of fun. The kids go around and find numbers 1 through 10, usually animals, book titles, or something like that on it, and then they come back to the desk and we give them a sticker. Um, take home, we are now mostly doing just for teens. Um, it's kind of nice to meet them where they're at. It's harder for them to come to in-person programs, so we add a take home program every month for them. Online programs, we started up a Discord channel for teens. We don't do as much. We haven't, since the pandemic, done anything for the younger kids. Um, Another thing that we work on is collection development. Um, so Margaret, the youth services librarian, and I do all the ordering. She does most of the fiction, so board book, picture book, early reader, chapter book, graphic novel, Jew fic, and then I do most of the nonfiction, um, the world languages, and the audio, video, that type of thing. Um, weeding, we have um, a general schedule throughout the year where we weed different collections. Um, occasionally, something will get large on us out of nowhere, and we'll be like, eh, we got to you know, uh -huh. figure that collection out and get it back down to size. Um, but we like to keep up with weeding so we can get all the good new stuff in there. Um, so staffing, we always have someone at our youth services desk, so there's always someone to help um, patrons when they come in. Um, we help with things like reader's advisory. We have a lot of um, tools that we can use both through our um, library databases and things that we've created. And I can show you a few of those things when we're downstairs. Um, also help with just general customer service, helping people find things, when something's happening, where they can find a different service. Um, we have a lot of fun with our displays and decorations. Um, we have a nice bookcase right next to the desk that we put most of our display books on. Um, every LA2 gets one to themselves and they change it out monthly and come up with different displays. And then we also have one that is seasonal and we put things like this month, it's Native American Heritage Month, so we dedicate one shelf to those materials. Um, these are some examples of our summer reading decorations from I think, two years ago. Those are pool noodles in the top one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have thought. <laughs> so we have a lot of fun with those, and um, I think this year is Adventure Awaits, and so I'm excited to see what Margaret comes up with. <laughs> I'm a little sad that I'm missing that <laughs> off, but it's okay. <laughs> you made all those. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. I, know that crack in the I took credit for some of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we also do our summer and winter reading programs. So the winter reading program will be coming up here soon. That is um, January and February. And then the summer reading program is eight weeks in the summer. We have performers. We do usually up our programming a little bit and try to get as many people in as possible. 
And then we also have teen volunteers, and our youth services librarian, Margaret, is in charge of um, supervising the teen volunteers. They come in once a week um, for an hour. We have three currently. Let's see. So outreach. So Minda has been doing a great job um, with outreach. She, this summer, has been doing pop-up libraries, and she was at Southdale, Leopold, um, Hegel Jamestown Parks. I think Southdale was the one that had the most interest and um, kept coming back, and um, she was actually just over at um, the Southside Elementary School last night and had a great program, so that is a lot of fun. Um, she does an evening book club for adults. Um, it used to be the book club at the pub, the pub has become difficult and we cannot, loud. We cannot get a pub that works out for us long term. Um, and she was kind of the head. I don't know if any of you were able to see this summer, the pollinator gardens. Um, absolutely gorgeous this summer. Um, she kind of took up the head on that and um, worked with three master gardeners. Um, Charmaine also helped with that, one of our LA2s. Um, so we've gotten to enjoy that. I love coming in in the morning, seeing the butterflies mm -hmm. flying mm -hmm. around. <laughs> um, she also does events at the Senior Center. She's our connection to the school. She does community events. Um, she did the Fitchburg Night Out um, with the police department and things like that. And then she's also in charge of the Story Walk in the Key Farms Park. It's lots of he help from Kevin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These are some of our statistics um, this year so far. Um, so our total youth programs this summer or this year were 240 with the attendance of over 6,000. Teen programs are less. It is harder for us to have teens attend in person. And then Minda has done about 53 outreach um, programs with over 2,000 in attendance, and some of those are those really big night out programs and things. Um, then for November and December, we have about 50 programs still left, so it's been a lot of fun. That's yeah. one of our Lego programs, and that's Who's Woods. Um, we had an owl that, <gasps> that's blew, our in, owl. Yeah, <laughs> that blew into the building. We found it on the COVID. patio yeah. during the pandemic. Oh. Someone called to say there's an owl on your patio in broad daylight, and it had a wing injury, and it, it couldn't be released so it lives with his yeah, words so now. She, she got to in. come back and visit. <laughs> <laughs> super cute. Yeah. So that's about all I have. Do you have any questions? It's really impressive. Yeah. Thank you. It's yeah. a huge attendance number too. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. There's oh. always something going on down yeah. there. Yeah. How are the pop up libraries advertised? Like how do I know that there's gonna be a pop up library? Sure. So let's see, I think I believe I mean our normal route, um, she Brings them around to the areas, signs as well. Um, yeah, that, that sign at Southdale that's yeah. in such rough shape. Mm -hmm. So you were putting stuff behind the plexi there. I think that's probably one of the best ways that we reach people in that neighborhood. Because yeah. okay. a lot of our advertising is online, um, you can or in print at the library, but that's hard to get out. Yeah. Um, she also works with Joining Forces for Families oh. and yeah. some other um, the neighborhood navigators. Yeah, she okay. tries to get stuff out to schools. It's still been yeah. kind of rough since the pandemic. Yeah. Getting everything, you know, filtered through the schools again and yeah. having them ready and to it, accept things. It was hard before that. Like, Madison is real hard to get something approved to, like, go in a take-home packet. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of hoops that I didn't expect. Yeah, and there's a lot, a lot of different schools to Yeah. Verona used to take them at the school, but then they had to go to the main spot yeah. and be approved before you could do anything after that. Yeah. So and I get we, that there's probably a lot of people that yeah. want to send information home with students, but, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she goes into the school. She brings all everything too. So she was just at Southdale. She'll bring our calendars and everything. She also talks about at Southdale, like just taking the van and driving around the block a couple of times when yeah. she gets there. And it, by the time she pulls up into the park, like there are kids running out there, like, where have you been? Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, there's yeah. 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 They were little bored. No, she, <laughs> said, she went. Um, she was following the mobile lunch. Um, oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so just got to see where they went and see if she could, you know, go oh. along and hand yeah. anything out. And she's like, and I, I think, think we need. A horn. <laughs> I think she did though. The first year, she had a wagon with a speaker in it. Yeah, no, she, she did. did. Yeah, <laughs> she would yeah. pull around. If she can find a way to get the message. Yeah, out. she's good at yeah, yeah, yeah. And sending the kids around to 
to get their friends. Yeah. Um, they also either when I was I followed one time behind yeah. her and she was in the van and there were seriously 10, 12 yeah. kids running down the sidewalk in the road screaming, "Come yeah. on, man!" Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I this is the, amazing. The first one or two of the season, they they have done like, "Here's how to read a clock so that you know, mm-hmm. like we're going to be here at this time on this day, and this is how you can you know you know when to come." Yeah. Yeah, and we'll do, a, at the end of the meeting, after we adjourn, we'll go down and take a tour of the youth area. But we have business to do first. Kristen, do you know when the next Story Walk will be installed? That I have an update about that later. Oh, okay. <laughs> After the director's wait. report. Okay. <laughs> and Kristen, I don't want you to think I wasn't looking at yours. Yours pops up on this screen for me. Oh, no, no, so I, I figured. I, I wasn't rude. I'm like, whatever. Yeah, no, that's She's a hard doing. turnaround there, so... <laughs> All right, then we will move on to new business letter B, resolution R20423, amending the 2023 library fund budget utility costs. So let's have a motion first. Okay, I will motion to approve. Okay, so this is a resolution. um, Because it is a budget amendment, it goes through the council, so it was referred out to us from the council last night, and it will go back to the council for a vote um, on the 28th. Um, And this is, so our utility bills are coming in quite a bit higher than expected. So I had budgeted 72,000 for MG&E bills, and I think we're gonna probably be close to 85. Um, We just got one in earlier this week that was worse than I expected yet again. So um, the the issue is that the, the chiller is failing, as we all know. So there are fewer compressors running. Um, we would typically lower the temperature in the library when we close at night and raise it when we open, but Kevin is very concerned that we won't be able to get back up to temperature. So we are just running it at one temperature all the time. Um, and it's doing okay. So I think it's worth spending the money. I am very happy that we have that extra money in the interest income account that we didn't expect because that will cover this no problem. Um, but the I think when I got last month's bills, I got three bills at a time and put them into my spreadsheet and was like, oh, no, this is not good. So I immediately called Misty, the finance director, to say, like, how do we handle this? We need to do something. Uh, So this is just kind of cleaning things up to what they're going to be, and then fingers crossed after we get installed. We're now at March for an installation for the new chiller um, that things will be more controllable and more affordable. Any questions? Excellent. All in favor of passing the resolution R204-23, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And we are at ECL annual contract. Let's do a motion for this as well. I'll make a motion to approve the agreement for the extension of library service. Thank you, Thank you. Man. Okay, so this is one that we sign every year. Um, this is our reimbursement from Dane County. Um, just a quick historical overview. When we first opened, we were paying about $185,000 a year. That came down as our circulation improved. Eventually flipped over, probably around 2016, into a payment that was like $6,000, and then it's kind of crept up. It is now kind of creeping in the other direction. I think that is... So this is the cross-municipal, cross-township piece where if you live in Fitchburg, you check out in Madison, we owe Madison a dollar amount for every item that you check out and vice versa. Everybody has their own cost per circ, we call it. So it's your expenditures divided by your circulation averaged over three years. So it's a big complicated formula that Dane County keeps track of. Um, so our, we are going down a little bit um, to 75,000. We were at 82,000 this year. Um, we have hired a consultant as a as the county system and all the libraries involved um, to look at the formula to think, because it's based on circulation, which we, now that everything is digital, like it, it doesn't seem like a great measure. They have come back to say, like, we really don't know of any better measure. We were talking about door count, but every library counts it differently. Um, so there's not really anything else that they could point to as, as a better way to do it. Um, the concern, I think, as a as a whole system is that Madison Public Library, I think, is paying in like 600000 to this, which is why I'm not going to complain about this going down <laughs> a smidge. We're okay. Um, I, I'm happy. I think because we opened when we did, 
this is not an enormous part of our budget. There are libraries out there that get almost a almost million dollars, um, and but when it goes down, then they have a real hard time functioning. So I'm real happy with where things are. I would like this not to go down anymore. I think it will continue probably to go down a little bit. Um, the formula that they're suggesting could have a, a, a floor and a ceiling so that nobody would have to pay into it, which would definitely take everybody else's payment down a little bit. That has not been decided. Um, that is still sort of a process that's going through. So I will keep you updated on that. But for where we sit right now, I think this is, I think this is fine. So I need to sign this? Yes. Do you have a copy of it? Yes. Okay. Then I will do that. All right. So we should vote on that, though. Okay. All in favor of passing the DCLS agreement for the extension of library service, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Excellent. All right. One more thing. Closure dates. Yes. Um, we have talked in the past about about the board not needing to formally vote on this, do you, which is fine. Um, although it's under action, so I suppose we should. Okay. I will motion to approve the 2024 library closures. So this is just something I put in front of the board every time this year, um, just to make sure that you're all okay with what we're doing for the next year. Um, the one change that we've got here um, is Martin Luther King Day. So we, in the past, have been open on that day. This past year, we added Juneteenth as a holiday, and we were closed for that, and the staff reported feeling a little bit icky about being open on MLK, like we're not observing it. Um, and so the city has always been closed. We've had it as a floating holiday. We're just going to go ahead and close and take the floating holiday and, and move it over. Um, everything else is, is kind of normal. We've got the two staff in services, so early May and early November are in there as well. Um, but pretty standard. And this will then take staff down to having just a half a day of floating holiday. City Hall closes at noon, I think, on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, yeah. And we don't. So that's where there's a, I, I would like to not have that half a day of floating holiday. It kind of is a messy, but I also don't see us closing early that day. We already do close early. We close at 5. So, yeah. Any questions? All in favor of passing the library closure dates for 2024, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Library closure dates are approved. I'm going to go to the president's report. I have nothing for you. So just thank you all for always going coming up. <laughs> thank you. Especially when it's dark outside. You don't want to leave your house and uh. home from work. <laughs> So we're going to go to the library director report, please. All right. So just a few things. I mentioned that the, the chiller install is now scheduled for March. Um, the installation contract was approved last night by council. It was also approved by the Public Works Department. So I think we are all set to go there. And as I said, things are going fine in the meantime. Um, sorter update. This is kind of exciting. So the sorter is set to arrive here on the 28th of November. So we are dismantling the old one on the 27th. Um, we have painted that room, put flooring in that room. We are getting ready to re-drywall where we use the drywall <laughs> so to cut it out. And we've all signed the back of it. So it's a little time capsule we're putting back in the wall there. Um, so they will be on site. I'm told we're, we're sort of deep in negotiations of IP addresses and firewalls and that kind of thing between South Central and Envisionware to make sure that this will work. This is the third sorter of this brand that they have installed, which is good. Um, so they, we will shut down the drive up book drop, which nobody's going to love, on the 27th of November, and we will hope to have it open on December the 6th. So they're here through the weekend and then into the next week. So the new interface is much bigger than the old one. It is a computer screen. You have to say you want to return a book. You have to put them in one at a time. If you put in a stack, it's going to give it back to you. Um, that is because that's how this order, it needs them one at a time to process them. Imagine you can't, if you have a DVD and a children's book and an adult book and a new book and you put them in the same stack, it cannot sort them. It has to take them one at a time. Um, it should be a big improvement for the staff. So right now we have a big conveyor belt you've seen and we have to throw all the returns from the interior return, but also the red bin deliveries are getting tossed up onto that. So like everybody's elbow health is going to be fantastic because this one just, you just stand and feed it into the machine. 
very much looking forward to it. A little Wendy. terrified about the details in the meantime, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Wendy, what do you anticipate in terms of patron complaints when we are? <laughs> um, you know, we've had to have the drop closed. We had it closed during COVID in the like shutdown period. Okay. Um, we've had to close it a number of times for this, like for a day or two to get the hole cut and all that stuff. And, and it, the response hasn't been terrible. Um, We're looking at 10, 11 days, something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. It's over a holiday. I mean, it's like, no, it's not. It's right after a holiday. Right after. Right after. Um, we'll see. I mean, I think people are not going to love that it's not 24-7 is the big problem. So the, the before we get here kind of returns. But it'll be worth it in the long run, I hope. All right. Then moving on, Little Free Library. We have been talking about this for a while, and I'm real sorry that I'm not reporting that it has been installed. They had, we had the Parks Department go out and look at the pad that we were going to install it on, and it's asphalt, and it's only an inch and a half deep, so it won't support it. We need to bolt it into the ground, and so they are pouring us a new pad next to the, uh, this is Southdale Park. There's a pad with um, a bike fixing station that has like something that you can hang your bike on. It was, it's there. Minda took pictures. She was all excited. <laughs> so I've seen pictures of the slab. So now it has to cure <laughs> for a couple days, and then we have to have good enough weather to go out and bolt it in. So it is ready to go. The books are ready to go. Working on signage. Um, it's in the garage. If you are parked down there, you might swing through the back. It's real cute. That's our logo. on the, We 3D printed our logo for the front of it. It's great. So hopefully I'll email you pictures when it's done. Um, and then the story walk. So the story walk was removed, um, as you may or may not know. So the, it was made out of cedar kind of boxes that clamped onto light posts around that walk in McKee. 18 stations. Um, have those been up for two years or three years? Three years. Those are three. Yeah. They're shot. Wood doesn't last that long. They, we've had to be like replacing parts and pieces. The plexi is now really warping, and so they're having a hard time switching them out. So those are going to have to be recycled. Um, the friends, yay, friends, are going to um, do their end of year um, fundraising campaign to purchase better ones um, from a company called Barking Dog. So it's a steel, no, it's aluminum, I think. So it's an angled panel that just sits on one leg. Um, and we'll have to sink that into concrete or attach it to concrete. Kevin has feelings about which one he wants to do. Um, probably it will move to the other side of the path so that we don't have to worry about digging next to electrical. Oh. Hadn't mm -hmm. thought about that. Yeah. Kevin thought about that. <laughs> Kevin's going to be digging, so yeah. he should think about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to have to move over to the other side. I think this will give us a little bit more freedom to say where we want them so we won't be tied to the pole, pole so it might be a little bit better spaced out. Um, so we'll have to make that decision. So they are fundraising, I want to say, like, soon through probably January. Um, so I, we will be taking this to the Parks Commission to get it approved um, because these are pretty permanent installations, um, hopefully in March, um, and then hopefully we're getting them in the spring. So, Any chance of having arrows on those boards? Because Ooh. I walk in that... Mm -hmm. yeah. Park all the time, and I hear Idea. people all the time saying, "I don't know which, which way, way honey. Yeah. I don't know which way we go, <laughs> which right. way." Right. So, and numbered, ah, numbered. That would, that would like be really one of nineteen or eighteen. Mm. Okay. Two of eighteen. Okay. Yeah. So people can yeah. know where to start. Right. Yep. Story. Which way to go if you want to get <laughs> and to which the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We will. We will yeah. look on that. Good idea. Yeah. Excellent. All right. That's all I have for library director. Any questions for our illustrious leader? And we'll move on to committee reports. Number nine on the agenda, strategic planning. We're in the last month and a half of this strategic plan. So I will be sending out the final calendar when it's complete. Um, and then I have a book on my desk right now called Creating a Staff-Led Strategic Plan. So we're cool, starting cool. the next one next year. And that's a five-year plan, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, I think so. Yeah, I think so. This one is, yes. Okay. I don't know about the next one. Uh, facilities. I think I've given you everything. And personnel. Um, we have one, one vacancy currently, and we interviewed yesterday, so hopefully filling that soon. Um, wait, I should tell you. We pay our shelvers, as you know, in the finance report, out of a 
separate account from the rest of the staff, and it is, we treat that as a pool of hours. And as you know, we raised the um, pay rate to $15 an hour, and we've gotten really good candidates, and they stay for a lot longer than they used to, and they don't take a lot of time off, and when they do take time off, they want to make it up. And so we might overspend that account a little bit, <laughs> because we're not used to that. We're used to having a lot of money left over and like trying to fill, fill hours as we can. So we're keeping a real close eye on that paycheck to paycheck to see where we are and if we need to do some sort of budget amendment, we'll be back with that. Um, I'm like, fingers crossed, we're gonna like squeak right under it. We'll right. see. It's a really good problem to have. It's, mm -hmm. Phil and I really don't know what to do with ourselves because we were like, wait, what? Like, we've never even come close to that. So, yeah, so that's good, but bad. Announcements, the next library board meeting will be December 20th at 5.30, right here in this lovely room. Mm -hmm. And I need a motion to adjourn, please. I move to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor of adjourning and heading out to the youth services area, say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is over. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. That was a lot. That was